the goal of uh, today is to talk about uh, um, Git and uh, also uh, versioning control. And so uh, what I will divide the, this lecture, this very short lecture in uh, two, uh, two things. The first is I will introduce a little bit why a version control system is important and why you might need one. And also uh, because I like some challenges, I will uh, do some hands on where I will show you in less than 10 minutes because I have also the theoretical part how to use Git. So I hope you will be not lost and you will enjoy this part as well. Uh, it, it will be fast, but I hope you will learn a few things. And I will also, of course, give you links uh, so you can learn by yourself. And we will also talk about that a little bit later. All right, so what is a version control system? A version control system can help you to do many things. And uh, I will say at least three things. The first things it will do is it will keep your work safe. Why? Is because using a versioning control system, you can go back for any kind of uh, unwanted or even wanted modification. So an example I give is, for example, you have a, a, a working uh, code and you are making some modification to it. And for some reason, the code is not working the way you want. Maybe there is an error or whatever. And you would like to go back to see what you change and maybe go to go back to a working version. If you don't have any kind of versioning system, uh, it's, it's not possible. And if you don't use a version control system, usually what you do is you do a new folder, you call that temp and whatever, and you end up with some files and after it, it starts to be a mess. Where if you have a versioning control system, you don't, you don't, you never create a new web, uh, directory actually. Everything is managed inside the versioning control system. So it's, it's a very elegant way to work. And it's also very nice because you can work as a team. And so if you work as a team, you can see who did the modification, what was the modification, and uh, you can keep track of everyone's work. So it's a very, also very great tool to work uh, as a team. It's also very nice for scientific work because you can use this versioning system for citation because you can reference a specific version of your code uh, inside your versioning. So some, if someone wants to use exactly the same version that what you use in a publication, you just send the, the reference and someone can download automatically uh, the version of the code you use. So it's very uh, also powerful for that. And it's, it's very easy for you as well because uh, you just use the version control system to manage that for you. Uh, you can also do branches for different uh, kind of work. So if you if you work with people or if you have a development a part and a production code, for example, for publication, you can differentiate that. And it's very uh, powerful for you as well, because again, everything is on one location and you don't end up to creating many folders and to have to handle many files and to merge them. So it's very powerful uh, to, to do that as well. And also for collaboration. So again, you can work as a team, but you can also manage conflicts. For example, if someone changed the same file on the same location, uh, the version control system can help you doing that. And if you also want, it's also possible to run tests. So if someone wants to publish modification, it's only accepted if some test success, otherwise the other doesn't get the code, for example. So everything like that can be managed with a version control system. And it's, uh, I really encourage you to use one. So uh, one version control system that exists is Git. It's one of the most used now for coding. Uh, you can use it for uh, also things that are not code, like LaTeX, anything that is text-based. It's not, uh, it's completely independent of the language you use. Uh, there is other systems that exist, but I will present Git uh, today. So what is Git? Git is basically a system that allows you to keep track change in your file. So here I have a file, uh, it's a little script. Uh, let's say it's my initial file. So it's just a, an array that uh, contains one, two, three. I add four and I print the list. So if I print that, I will have one, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. I can do modification on this file. For example, I can add a line. So here what I, I add this line, basically, 
I just uh, add the number five. And so if I print that, I will have win two, three, four, five. So that's uh, one modification I can do to a five, for example, or I can change the line. So here I remove the line two and I change it by pop, the function pop. What it does, it just removes the last element. So if I print this array, I will just have one, two. So this is kind of modification you can do to a file and Git will track what change in terms of line and so what changed between those, this initial state between the new states you create. So Git, uh, as I say, we keep track of changes. So if you add, update, or remove lines into any kind of files, but it will also give you who did the modification, when, and also why, because you need to put some uh, explanation when you create a new version on Git, what you did. So everything is, uh, so it's very powerful, uh, uh, um, explanation and uh, memory of what happens to your files. The change can be distributed to other. You can share that with other, for example, using C for Science or GitHub. And you can, as I say, you can also create different uh, version of the same project. It's called branches. You can also do that uh, as well uh, in Git. And um, so how to use it? Uh, first of all, you need to install it. So if uh, you are on Windows, I give you here the link. Uh, you can click on these slides and you can uh, download on Windows. On Mac OS, it's already installed, so you have nothing to do. And on Linux, you need to install the Git package of your Linux distribution. Uh, to run it, uh, I will show you how to use it in command lines. Uh, you can also use some graphical interface, for example, Git Kraken, it's free. And, but I like the command line because you can really see how Git works and uh, uh, to really understand the process. And after, if you are confident and you know how to work Git, you can use the graphical interface. That's my philosophy. So to run it, uh, if you are on Windows, you will have this folder Git on your um, uh, whatever start menu and you need to start Git bash. And on Mac OS and Linux, you need to start the terminal. So here I'm on uh, Mac OS. So I find the terminal in the application menu, then utilities, and here I have the terminal. And, uh, oops, I need to uh, increase my size here, otherwise you will see nothing. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I would start another terminal that's actually bigger. It's the same thing, but it's the one I use. Uh, all right. And so I have my terminal. I will just create a folder that I will call git course. And I will go to this uh, git course directory. All right. And uh, now in order to git to work, I just use git init, which initiates the, the git repository. So repository is just a directory in which I will work later. So now git is there. And I can create a file I will maybe call test.pi. And I will do the same example I show you uh, on the first thing. So I have my uh, array. Then I add the number four to it. Then, oops, I make a mistake here. Then I print the list. Okay. So this is my file. If I ask Python to run it, I have one, three, three, four, okay. So now I want to say to Git, okay, I want to keep track of these files. And so I add the files to Git. So I use the command add and I say, I specify the name of the file. So test.pi. And then now I, I have to say to Git because I can add many files I want. And I want to say now is the version I want to create. I use the commit command. A commit is like a snapshot. It's making a new version. It's called a commit in Git. And as I say, I need to specify a title. So here I will say first version, first version of test.pi, all right? And so now I create my version of, uh, of my uh, file. I can see all the version by using the common log. And so here I can see, uh, my name, when, and the title. And if I create a new version of it, I hope I will have the time because I'm a little bit late, but that's fine. So for example, I had the number five, like I did in my example. All right. I can see what changed using git diff. And I can see here, git is telling me I had 
this line uh, on my file. And of course, if I run my code, and now I have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, there is also a command. So now I, if I want to add uh, this file, I do git add test.pi and then I do a commit again. So second version, for example, and now I have a new version. I can of course go back to the previous version I did using the command checkout. And here I need to specify uh, the version of the commit I want to go. And I say which version I want, which file I want to restore. And so now if I look to my file, it went back to the previous version. But I still, if I go to the log, oops, log, it will be a new version. So I can always keep track of what is coming to my file. So this was a really, really short introduction about Anzan. You have here the command I use, so you can uh, go back here and see a little bit the command I use and some explanation. And I give you here some links where you can find if you want to learn how to use the terminal, you have the software carpentries and the wiki owl. And after, if you want to use Git in command line, you, I recommend those two sites. I also give you the Turing way book. It's a really uh, nice online book. Uh, it's uh, well done by a lot of people around the world. And it's everything you need to know to do reproducible research using your code. So you have uh, version control, uh, and so you have the explanation, but you also have all the command you can use to achieve this goal. So it's a really powerful book and it will cover much more than Git. You have license, you have code quality, testing, uh, a lot of things are covered in this book. So I really recommend this book as well. And now I have to thank you because uh, it's 11 minutes. So <laughs> sorry, Laureline, I a little bit, uh, do a little bit more than 10 minutes, but I think it's still okay. So I'm thanking you for this uh, to be there. I hope you enjoy. Will be time for questions. And uh, before I just uh, end phases that next week, we have a new, another coffee lecture about enhance your research equations. So it will be next week at 10 o'clock. And if you want to know more, there is a link here. Thank you very much. And I am all here for your question, guys.